On today's episode of Watch Chargo, we're having an engine rebuild party on the tracker. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chargo and today Gabe's here, Jake's probably on his way, pizza's on its way, and we have the head back. And a lot of you commented, hey, uh, the head's probably warped. And I was thinking, hey, the head's probably warped. So, everything came together in like the craziest way because I tried to put this engine back together the next day. I know it didn't happen. It's been, uh, this is the second day. But I called uh, Rian in the morning, Performance Welding Solutions, and I said, hey, I've got a cracked uh, cast iron manifold. I need it welded and I need it back today. He said, bring it over. And if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, watching the uh, John Deere 420 build, you know Stan at AAA Machine. I showed up there right after Rion's, and I dropped the head off with him, and I said, hey, it's probably warped, can you grind it? We checked it real quick, we stuck a feeler gauge under the straight edge, it was warped, and uh, he charged me $60 to resurface the head. And then I uh, brought it back home that night, Gabe and I were ready to rebuild it, I went and got our spring compressor, and our spring compressor is gigantic, it's like this big, it's for 350 heads, and it will not even come close to depressing the valve springs for this 1996 Geo Tracker head. Resurface cylinder head for the Tracker. Looks beautiful, no more warpage, and Stan and I put the new cam seal on. We have made great progress, and he pulled the head bolts, so I'm ready to toss the new head bolts in. Tonight, it's going back together. Hear that? I hear a Lamborghini, and I think it's Mr. Tanner Braungard himself. Here it is. This is a seven foot, this is almost, yeah, it's a seven foot jump. Yeah. No! Way short, way short. <laughs> that was really horrible. Pathetic. <laughs> At least it's not actually, they'll come off. Yeah. Hoovy keeps interrupting all my videos I'm making and having me move cars for him. So here I am out in the ultimate land yacht, the Hoovy Special. I think he only removed about a hundredth of an inch material, so nothing crazy there. It's not gonna change compression, we don't have to worry. And now, we're gonna get in here, clean this up, get all the oil and trash out of it from grinding. We're pretty much ready to assemble it, after, but we're gonna go ahead and pull it all apart, change the valve stem seals, then assemble it. We just cleaned the head up in the solvent tank, and as you can see, it looks a million times better. I'm gonna go ahead and get you guys a couple close-ups here. There you go. So the next morning, I took the head straight back to Stan and I said, here's these valve stem seals. I couldn't get them in because we don't have the right spring compressor. Can you finish that? And he said, absolutely. And I said, can you get it done today? And he said, mm, probably. We got the head back today and it's completely refreshed. We've got a complete valve job, valve stem seals. Obviously it's been ground because it was ground the first day and we're ready to reassemble this $400 tracker that now is more like a $3,000 tracker. I think we've, uh, well, there was no budget, but of course this one went insane and everything's new. So, uh, let's get in here, clean up the block. We're gonna clean up the mating surface for the head gasket. Obviously the head is perfect now. It's got a brand new mating surface and maybe we can start this thing today. I'm hoping. Tons of parts just came in. That vibrant silicone hose just came in. NGK plug wires just came in. And basically every heater hose for the entire car is also sitting inside. So let's get started. Here are our nice new parts. Look at that resurfaced head, those super pretty valves, and uh, you can see everything inside's been cleaned up as well. Here is our freshly repaired exhaust manifold. You can see those beautiful nickel welds on the cast iron running from way out here where the crack started all the way back under that heat shield. It's almost more of like a three inch crack. We thought it was a two originally. And of course there's another crack Rion found right there. And I have to give a huge shout out to Rion at Performance Welding Solutions. He is probably the only welder in this city I trust. And one of the only people I trust to do cast iron because it's such a tricky thing. Everyone, you know, wants to weld cast iron, but doing it as an absolute art form, you know, he heated the entire part and then he welded it with nickel and then let it cool back down, checked it for cracks again. And uh, he was still worried about it and was like, go try it on the car before we uh, even call this good. Hopefully today we get to start this thing and test out his work on this manifold. I'm sure it's perfect. He's welded plenty of stuff for me in the past. It's always amazing. And maybe one day we can show you his welds on titanium. Cool. So we were hanging out with my brother and uh, he saw we got the head off and he was like, use this to clean the block. And I was like, okay, whatever. 
This thing is amazing. I just used it to do this little tiny section right here. Watch how fast you can clean old gasket material. Okay, we've got a rag right here. We're gonna clean everything out thoroughly after this. That's bare metal! And it doesn't take any of the metal out because they're little rubber fingers. This is the coolest thing ever. It was $13.49. It's a 3M something disc. And uh, you should definitely use this if you ever have to clean your block up while you're swapping a head gasket or something. Yeah, you guys want that pizza gang? Pizza gang? What? It's right here. I'm so excited. Ooh, it's got pineapple on it. Meat lovers and pineapple does go on pizza. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing on here real quick. This is our uh, coolant outlet to the heater core. We've got new hose for that as well. We don't have a torque spec for this though. We do not have a torque spec. I will look it up. Okay. I'm thinking it's all aluminum, probably eight to 10, maybe 12 pounds. Click. No, okay, I went ahead and set it to 90. <laughs> You didn't say click. Oh. Click. Okay. I'm gonna say that's pr it's pretty tight. Okay, so we've gotta get our alignment dowels in here. One goes here, and I think the other one goes right on the other side, which would make perfect sense for a head gasket. And then we have this nice new head gasket. Got all of our old gasket material off. That guy looks lined up to me. Look lined up to everybody else? I concur. Uh, I concur. Doctor? Doctor? Doctor. Let's throw a head on it. Do you like how Stan marked it with F? That For would be front? Front. Oh my. Yeah, we know what's going on. But do we? Yeah, you're close. Right. There we are. A little bit of wiggle. A little wiggle wiggle. All right, I like the way that looks. Nice and clean. And then we have all of these brand new head bolts to drop down in here. The old ones all had to be uh, knocked out with a punch because these washers all uh, went down into their little seats there and stuck. So we couldn't get the head bolts out until we actually punched them out. But that's done. Got nice new ones. And that's definitely not the hole for that. There we go, couldn't see what I was working on. I need to get back to gloves too because these are soaked in oil. Stan numbered all of these guys for me. Now I'm gonna hook all these little clips on here, get the balls back into their sockets. And we've got our valve train back other than the cam. You definitely wanna make sure these clips go all the way on. Where is three? Man, they're even in order in the box. Fixkick.com has our uh, head bolt tightening sequence and the steps. We're gonna start with 26 foot-pounds, then we're gonna move to 41, and then we're gonna finish it off with 52 foot-pounds of torque. So, sequence map, 16 valve engine here, and we will follow the sequence map. All right, so 16 valve, tight. All right, there's the front of the engine. Start here, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got it. Pretty simple. Torque Master Gabe putting in work here. Oh man, I thought it already clicked in. There we go. Also, I tried to do this, but Gabe was like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, man. Fine with me. Two. All right, final value is 52. All right, before we stab the cam, we are putting a little bit of assembly lube basically everywhere. Lots of assembly lube here. Not too much actually though, it's about that much. Now I just touch it, spread it into the bearing race, hit everything else that's around me. A little bit of CRC engine assembly lube here. Good stuff. It's great stuff. 
Heck yeah, and then we'll put some on the mesh for Definitely. the distributor. That seems to be a little bit. That should catch quick. Yeah, that'd be fine. Until it can start oiling itself properly. Now this is gonna be fun, isn't it? Yeah. We uh, should probably start getting the bearing caps on it. Got a lot of assembly lube on there. Yeah. Actually, does it need a shift too? Nope. Oh, there we go. Well, should we get that bearing seal on there? Yeah. Thank you, Suzuki. The one thing that you have done for us that is nice Every single one of these cam bearings there is labeled. Super cool of them. So we just went through uh, timing the engine. Uh, the timing belt's not on, but we've got, gone ahead and set time for the most part so that we don't have any issues with interference while we're tightening down these cam caps. The cam belt drive here has a mark on it. It's a dot and an E, and the E is printed like all the way up here, and that should be straight up and down. And then there's a mark right here on the crank timing pulley, and it lines up with this mark right there, and it's actually you can see it's this cog. So as long as that matches that mark, you know that uh, you're at TDC on number four, and as long as E is straight up, you're all, the cam is also at TDC on four. So it's ready for the timing belt as soon as we get the water pump and the tensioner and everything in. Torque finding mission here, and uh, everything's tight on the cam, all the cam bearings are down. Now all we need to do is get that torque. And somewhere in here, I had the torque list open. 16 valve camshaft carrier cap bolts X12, 89 inch pounds. Must be staged up and down. Should have said staggered, I think. But 89 inch pounds. Okay. That, the, first, no, I thought it was 89 foot for a uh, No, that would be what? <laughs> yeah, just enough to explode the entire thing. 89 inch pounds is a nice, nice soft spec. Jump back and forth when you're tightening down these caps. It just says stagger them. It doesn't give you a particular order. Yeah. And yes, I changed sequence there just to... Oh, you gotta mix it up. I know. Of course. You gotta surprise the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you don't surprise <laughs> the engine... I mean... Sneak up on it. Exactly. Do I have to hook the brackets back up? No, of course not. Thank God. I think we should just use sticky tack. I got Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue will probably get it done if we use enough of it. Flex um, seal. Okay. Uh, <laughs> exhaust and intake manifold nuts bolts. 13.5 to 20. But it... Oh, it does say foot pounds. 13.5 to 20 foot pounds. That is going to be a royal pain in the butt. Right? To get to a torque those. wrench in those? Oh my gosh. <sighs> I like that these all have a carbon fiber esque look. All the gaskets? Yeah. Yeah. That's Well, these are true carbon gaskets, obviously. What else would I buy? You did buy is a that, tracker. Is that for extra lightness? <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's our exhaust gasket, ready to get that manifold on. This thing's gonna go together. Let's do it. I'm done over here. We thought we'd drop in and see what you were doing over at my place. See how the cleaning was going? Yeah. Well, I mean, the PCB is still trash, but I think the valve cover clean. I might actually hit these little spots right there, but the rest of it's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting the gasket in place. Here's our spark plug tube seals. Oh man, those drop right into place. The old ones were trash, they were so rotten. Valve cover, clean, ready to install. Oh, and that one on the back doesn't have a washer, that was the drill. Yep. Cool. Could have been a real baller and bought new hardware. I could have, but then again, I couldn't have. It's not like a Honda where they just sell the hardware today. There's no Suzuki dealership to go ahead of. It's wonderful. Oh yeah, nice. Right? Welding cast sucks. Welding cast is the worst, and he is the boss. I'll get all these down. Yeah, what am I doing? And then I guess we'll grab a torque wrench. Next up, torque wrench. Jake and Gabe are over uh, cleaning up the intake since we basically ended up stripping it completely apart. We were like, hey, let's stick into the solvent tank. First order of business, O2 sensor. Second order of business, lower bolts. Third order of business, torque the O2 sensor to spec, which I think is 40 foot-pounds. Don't quote me on that. I've got to look it up one more time. But as far as I can tell, that guy is in. Also, I put some copper anti-seize on the O2 because, you know, it's kind of a wear item. You end up changing them every once in a while, and uh, I want to be able to get it out easily. And I also will lower the torque spec by, you know, five pounds to the 
compensate for the anti-seize. And then I can go ahead and torque these bolts as well. I do think we've given up on starting it tonight because the EGR gasket is the one gasket we're missing out of all of this. Of course we were missing one. And it's not part of the uh, head rebuild gasket set. So uh, we might be putting off starting it till tomorrow to put in the one last little bitty piece on the back of the intake. But hey, at least that's it. Uh, I'm sure we'll have the valve cover on, exhaust and intake on tonight. And uh, that should pretty much wrap it as long as we got the water pump and timing in. So that's, that's what's left. And uh, wipe down. Oh yeah, get all of our permanent marker marks off there. To make life easy while we were working on it, I just wrote the uh, tightening sequence on. The manifold to the downpipe bolts are done. I got those nice and tight. Now the O2 sensor should be 40 foot pounds. Let's get our O2 socket on here. Get this guy tightened down. All right, it's hand tight now. I'm gonna set the torque wrench to 35 and uh, not crank it down too hard here. That looks like 35 to me. So now we're ready to pull this up in here. I don't remember exactly where this, oh, this clips into our bracket on the exhaust, okay. Uh, we don't wanna put that bracket on yet uh, because it might interfere with all the other stuff like the distributor and the valve cover gasket, so I'm just gonna let this hang for now and torque these to 15 foot-pounds. What do you think, man? Beautiful, freaking beautiful. My only question is why did nobody tell me about this whole budgeting thing? Like, What's budgeting? Yeah, what is budgeting? What are you talking about? I don't know, but it kind of made my life like 10 times better when I got a budget together. <laughs> uh, we were too busy with uh, Algebra 2. Algebra 2. Sandwich something back in your hand. Is yeah. it? Yeah, that little breather <laughs> tube back there. Remember we have to like mount that wiring harness to the intake. To prevent any further June bug ingress, we've decided to set the valve cover on in advance. Even though it's probably actually ready to go on. But, Ooh. wow, it looks like an engine. This is the part where we say, look, it's done. <laughs> it's fairly clean, too. <laughs> New spark plugs going in, NGK, what are they? 7092s. Yep, that don't work. <laughs> That's because of that, isn't it? There we go, now it's actually lined up. Boys and girls, we're gonna add all the horsepower and mass airflow since we're ruining oil. So, I mean, honestly, I probably shouldn't put this in because all, we all know that they are soaked with oil and ruin all your mass airflow sensors. But wait, I see. But it comes with a sticker that says stop. And that's really what we were going for here. And it probably comes with a K&N sticker. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that's pretty dirty. I'm glad to change this out. Wow. Quite yeah. a bit of junk in there. Here goes our new super ultra high performance. It's just soaked in oil. Canon air filter. What a cool install, it's done. In the spirit of doing all the maintenance in the world, we're going to clean the math. Uh, and I'm going to get it out of the shot because this stuff goes everywhere. Actually, it looks new in there, I like it. Wow, look at that, that was black a second ago. Dude. That's brown plastic. We've completely changed the car. No, we have the technology. We, I think it's still a geo tracker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you could be right. You could be right. Well, I just dropped the one bolt for this thing. Bolt or the nut? Oh, you know, one of the bolts. I don't even know what brand antiques I use. Don't worry about it. We can put the knocker loose on them, right? <laughs> knocker loose them up. All right, so we got this one bolt down here somewhere. I told the O'Reilly's boys I wanted every hose for the engine and they just handed me all that. Good, you got every model, including the ones not sold to you. <laughs> Correct. We just got this old coolant hose. The, it took probably 10 minutes to get each clamp off and then we had to cut each hose to get them off because they're all completely rusted onto the barbs and one of these barbs is like two and a half inches long. So now we can finally put our new Gates radiator hoses in and it does look like it might need trimmed a little bit there. We're gonna go ahead and knock off that little bit of extra hose. And uh, then we can reassemble that. It took a long time to replace the heater hoses and the radiator hoses. But now we can get back to working on the intake and get back to reassembling the engine. We have stopped again because we ran out of clamps to change the last couple of radiator hoses. 
and O'Reilly's is very closed. So we can't just make a run down the street to pick up some uh, clamps. And we also wanted to pick up that EGR gasket that was missing. It was kind of the last thing preventing us from starting this engine once the intake goes back on. So, tons of it's together. We've made some good progress. We still need to time it, get the water pump on, and bolt the intake on. But uh, one more trip to O'Reilly's should wrap us up. And uh, we've definitely been replacing every single coolant hose in this guy so we don't have any more leaks down the road. Thanks to Gabe and Jake for coming over and helping. We definitely got a long way. Thank you guys so much for watching. The Geo will be finished very soon. It was gonna be the fastest engine rebuild ever. And then it became the one week engine rebuild, so. It will be, no. after video editing. And yeah, we can fast forward it. We should just shove them all into one video and get it out the door. <laughs> <laughs> that is it for today, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. Anyway, yeah, this side's done. I told you my side would be done. Your side had less bolts. It has way less bolts. It's, it's actually, it's, 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 look at it, it's got like four, three bolts. Technically it's not done because I haven't put the uh, engine block hook on it, but I wanted to leave the block hook off until we got all this wrapped. So then we die because the hook yeah. shuts. <laughs> yeah. Very soon. Very soon. Saturday? How many uh, beetle power do you think this thing has? Well, we've got so many June bugs inside the cylinders. Yeah. June bug. <laughs> mm. It's going to be like the most enticing smell ever the first time it gets cranked oh, up. Man. Oh, I forgot. I need to grab a new PCV. I do think this PCV was leaking like none other. That's kind of um, hard to tell. The entire block is. <sighs> that gasket's trash, too. Maybe yeah. I can grab another one of those. Yeah. Oh, well. June bugs have nothing on engines. <laughs> I it is a, a tracker. <laughs> <laughs>